Schefter. Good morning, Shefty. Good morning, gentlemen. How's everybody doing? Uh, just splendid, my Great. friend. Just splendid. Uh, what are you hearing? You got the, the, the tra- trade deadline like a week away. What's, yeah. the, what's the scuttlebutt? Well, <laughs> I mean, I think the Eagles would love to do something. I just don't see much of anything happening. They're mm. kind of restricted in what they can do with Zach Ertz on the injured list, with Deshaun Jackson on the injured list, with um, all Sean Jeffrey's number being what it is. I mean, if you're waiting for something, uh, it's going to be tough. I, I don't expect them to make the kind of move that the Eagles usually make in other years, a big, splashy move, mm. just not what they've done. So, li- listen, um, we've said a million times they are one of the most aggressive teams in football. It's why they're fun to track. But I just don't see anything big coming from them in the next week. But let's see if I'm wrong. Uh, you, there has been reports out there regarding uh, Zach Ertz and the Packers having interest and the Ravens mm-hmm. having interest. Do you have any idea how close that actually got before the Eagles put him on IR? Uh, I, I think that the fact there was conversation thought tells you that it was possible. But once you get injured, that changes everything. Mm-hmm. Can't get done now. And so that just changes the whole dynamic. I, I think it was on track to where it was very much in play. It was on track to be in play. And then, obviously, it's not. It just changes just like that. Now, speaking of the Ravens, they just added Des Bryant. Uh, mm-hmm. Surprised to see that he's that he's back, quote-unquote, or were you kind of expecting like this, something to happen sooner rather than later? I, You know, I, that's one that I just think – Guy's been out of football, guy's older, guy's coming from Achilles. Good for him that he's back. You like to see people get a chance. I, I you know, I'm I'm just a little more skeptical about how much of an impact he'll make. I mean, you're, you're talking about a guy, like I said, it's on the practice squad right now. He's been out of the league. So it's it's not gonna be Des Bryant the way people know Des Bryant. Right. I'll tell you that. Uh, speaking with Adam Schefter, ESPN. Shefty, what, 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 you know, we talk a lot about the Dallas Cowboys here, obviously, and they're coming into town this week. Is mm. it more surprising to you that they're on the field problems, even though Dak Prescott, we understand that, but that their on the field problems are as bad or worse as their off the field problems? Like, which, which, which surprises you more? Well, what are the off the field problems? Just the finger pointing at the coach, that kind of thing. Well, yeah, it seemed like the the the, the, the players were saying stuff about the coach. The coach said he was kind of disappointed that nobody stuck up for his quarterback. Then, of course, the owner comes in and and yeah. is saying that there isn't a leadership problem or whatever it may be. Yeah, well, what, I I just think Bob, when you're talking about this, is this team had high expectations, and there was a lot of anticipation for the season. Owner spent a lot of money for the season season starts, and, and then the quarterback goes out. And, and I'm not telling you that they were on their way to the playoffs before he got hurt, but it's amazing how much has changed since he's gone out and how much he's able to cover up. And, yes, they were they were still in these shootouts every week with high scores, but at least they could win those games with the guy playing quarterback and some of these guys who were playing offensive line before they got hurt. Now it just seems like everything, everything has gone south. Like, they are – the teams in this division – they are gift wrapping the division title for the Eagles. Here, Philadelphia, just take the division. It's like they couldn't make it any easier for the Eagles to do their work and win this division. I, I, I don't think I I would I, I have to check this out, but I think there may never be another year where the NFC East has been this poorly contested, where the teams were this bad where the record that wins this division is going to be that off, where everything feels like almost uncompetitive. Who's going to challenge Philadelphia in this division for the the division title? The Giants maybe have the best chance? The Giants? Wow. Washington? Washington has the best, (laughs) better divisional record right now, but... Yeah, yeah, Yeah. And, and they play hard. They play hard. But you're talking about a team with, like, major quarterback questions where they're where they're trying to overhaul the culture, where they've been a disaster. Like, wow. Okay, well, so okay, so Washington is Philadelphia's chief competition <laughs> for the division title. Great. I mean, I, look, 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 could they could they make this any easier for the Eagles? No, no, no they, they absolutely couldn't. It's funny, I said the exact same thing about Washington yesterday, that their biggest competition is Washington, and that's a great thing 
for Philadelphia. Now, how much? How, let me ask this: How, how much? Because we talked about this going into the season a number of times. Doug Peterson and the familiarity he has with his coaching mm-hmm. staff and his team. Do you think that's the biggest difference right now as to why the Eagles are barely ahead of what has been a terrible division? No, no, no. I don't. I, I think. I mean, that's that's one one of the advantages for the Eagles, but that's not it. It's that again. You just look at the teams that the Giants just they, they've they've just missed on some picks. It just hasn't worked in certain areas. Saquon Barkley gets hurt. Uh, they are still waiting for the development of some of the young players. Washington mentioned Dallas. Defense is abysmal. Team is falling apart. People are questioning the coaching staff. And it seems like it, 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 it's a uh, almost like a TV series Dallas now where I'm just telling you there's uh, nine more weeks of this. Nine more weeks where they're going to be <laughs> questioned and ridiculed and criticized and scrutinized. And it's going to be nine weeks of that in Dallas. Nine more weeks of that. And as I was saying before, it, it has never been easier to win the NFC East than it is this year. Never. Yeah, yeah that's certainly what it seems like. And I know you were getting into this a second ago, but I, I, you classify the Dallas Cowboys right now as sellers before the deadline? Who wants what they have? <laughs> uh, who was it? Uh, Detroit just got Everson Griffin. For, for a conditional yeah. sixth round draft pick. Yeah. In other words, we'll take whatever we can get for these guys. Like that. That's what you're talking about right now. Mm-hmm. And 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 so, um, I, I mean, the you know, to me, you know, I, I I've got a cowboy fan who lives in my neighborhood. He texts me all the time, you know, about <laughs> this or that, you know. And so he's I'm like, so, "I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Adam." Yeah. And, and he texted me yesterday. Can we get a quarterback? And I said to him. Quarterback is not your problem. That's not the, like people just think that there's a band aid to put on these things. How about last year? What was the strength of this team? The strength, the offensive line. Well, guess what? Travis Frederick retired. Lael Collins had season ending surgery. Tyron Smith is out for the year. Zach Martin has been out with a concussion. So you take those four guys that were the foundation of your team and wipe them out. And, again, Philadelphia has gotten a little taste of that, a little taste. Take away Andre Dillard and Brandon Brooks and Jason Peters and take away Lane Johnson, and that's what you'd be talking about in Philadelphia. Then it would be the similar situation to Dallas where you basically lose four offensive linemen. And and Philly's lost others, I think. Obviously, Matt Pryor was on the COVID list, and uh, there have been other people that have been in and out, I'm sure, but – you take any team's offensive line away, they're not going to function. And then you take the offensive line away, and you combine it with a horrible defense, and you combine it with a new coaching staff that seems, I don't know, just overwhelmed and overmatched right now. And you have a solution, like I said, for a year of just craziness in Dallas that's already unfolding. Shefty, the answer might be as simple as no, but uh, we've talked about Zach Ertz and, and some other players, but there's is there anybody on the Eagles that we really haven't talked to you about that might have some trade value that you've heard of at all? I, I think when you look at them, to me, I think they're deep at safety. So if another team is looking at Philadelphia's roster, to me, I think the Eagles could afford to trade another safety. They're deep enough there that it wouldn't surprise me if they make a move there, not sure who goes, not sure who another team would want, but that's the spot to me that I would be looking at over the next six days for the Philadelphia Eagles, the safety spot. Do, do we make, you, may, you mentioned a couple of injuries when it comes to New York, for instance, comes to the Giants. Do you feel like the Eagles are always up there amongst man games missed, especially over the last three seasons when it comes to how prevalent injuries seem to be mm. on this roster? You know, you could say that, but they would argue with you in Los Angeles with the Chargers. They would argue with you in San Francisco with the 49ers. They would argue with you in Dallas with the Cowboys. They would argue with you in Denver with the Broncos. So, I mean, this happens. I mean, it's just a part of the sport. And we're in a year, I think, again, not that I need to remind everybody, where there was no off-season program, where training camp was abbreviated where there were no preseason games, where we went right into action. And so 
we right now, we're, the league is on pace for a record number of torn ACLs this year. Mm. I think it's 29 so far. Jeez. So why is that? Well, uh, maybe it's just unfortunate, but probably it's connected to everything that's gone on in this country. That that would be my guess. Right. I mean, it's a logical guess. Not a doctor or scientist, but, I mean, doesn't that make sense? Uh, yeah, and you, you we had talked about this even going into the 2011 season, and you would reference that going into this season with a, I'll just put it this way, yeah. a very odd off season. We'll put it well, that way. Well, I, I said that 2011 was the year of the torn Achilles. Like, every, it seemed like there was an outbreak of people tearing their Achilles, more torn Achilles than ever before. And then this year... Um, I'd have to find the exact numbers. I think it's 29, like I said, 29 ACLs right now. And and, and that doesn't even include some of the other high-profile injuries like Dax compound fracture. Um, you know, there, there, there been, it's, been, it's been a brutal year. And, you know, there's certain players you just can't replace. You just, you just can't. And like I said, if Dak were healthy, I believe that, Things would be different in Dallas. I'm not telling you that they'd be a 10 and 16. Maybe they'd be an 8 and 18. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Right. But we wouldn't be talking about them, I don't think, in quite the same way today that we are now where people are laughing at them. (laughs) <laughs> laughing at them. And I know that that makes Philadelphia so sad. So sad this morning. <laughs> I, I said yesterday we're, we're, we're uh, fiddling as Dallas is burning. But uh, the uh, the quarterback position with Dallas right now, Andy Dalton, Ben DiNucci, who do you think the Eagles will face? What are you hearing as far as Andy Dalton's status right now? Well, I think the Eagles are very curious about that as well, yeah. as is as is the city. And Dallas has not said anything. Uh, I, I think what I would say is this, that, well, there's no answers right now. Just the optics of it are such that if Andy Dalton were to play, I don't think that would look great for the Dallas Cowboys, a team that's out of it. Like, this guy just got his brain smashed, and, and now you're putting him back out there a week later? Mm. I mean, is that really? So I, I, I think that, again, if I had a guess, and I, and I don't know anything, my guess would be that it's Ben DiNucci on Sunday night, but, I mean, like – can you imagine if we had been talking at the start of the season? I said you're going to get Ben DiNucci on Sunday Night Football versus. I honestly, who's Ben DiNucci? <laughs> I think he was actually my waiter in South Philly for my fine I, I, Italian meal I had last night. As a matter yeah, of fact, I, I, might have yeah, been. It, it, it's not, you know the Serengeti. It's, not, it's not, you know, I don't know what it, what it sounds like. Ben DiNucci. It sounds <laughs> like some you know great Italian dessert. I don't know. <laughs> Chef, is is Tom Brady the biggest story to come out of this NFL season seven weeks into it so far? Well, I think going in, he was always going to be the biggest story, and there was always going to be a great curiosity about how he fared there um, with the Buccaneers and the way he's playing right now. He's lighting it up. And it was funny because you remember the first week he struggled against New Orleans. Uh, a couple of weeks, in, he was not playing great. And I spoke to a couple of coaches that had watched his tape. And they're like, you, you have no idea how good he's playing. I'm like, really? They're, they're, they haven't played great. And they're like, well, no, this guy's making the throws, and anybody who watched him on Sunday uh, against Vegas, and, and you know what I was thinking also as I'm watching that, um, Vegas was one of the teams that was monitoring Tom Brady, that had a mild interest in Tom Brady, and I don't know how much of an interest he did or didn't have, but they they, they didn't get aggressive, and. Knowing Tom a little bit, I would say that in the back of his mind, I wonder if he fed off that in any kind of way. Okay, I wasn't good enough for you to make a real run at. Okay, let, 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 I'll show you how good I am. And that's the way a lot of great athletes are. They got that chip. And I, nobody asked him that, but I've wondered that for the last week. Um, I wonder if that played a part in the performance he had on Sunday, and I would venture to say yes. Uh, speaking with Adam Schefter, a couple quick ones for you, Adam. Any any update on Jalen Rager? Have you heard anything about his status? He's on the 21-day list right now. He can practice and all that. Any word on whether or not he'll play against the Dallas Cowboys on Sunday? That I don't know. Okay. I, I, I do not know that. Right. 
I should have checked yesterday. I apologize, I didn't, but I don't know that right now. Uh, if you hear anything, I'm sure you know Twitter is a fun thing to work on. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, uh, Shefty, last thing for you. We're talking about shows getting rebooted. Saved by the Bells getting a reboot on the Peacock streaming uh, channel. Uh-huh. Is there a show Adam Schefter would like to see rebooted? Huh. Well, not to be all sentimental and emotional. The, the, there was a great show that my wife and I watched. Uh, over the pandemic, um, it was on it was on either Amazon or Netflix called Modern Love. And it was like nine series, and it ended. And so would that be considered a reboot? They're going to do like a second season? Is that the kind of thing we're talking about here? Does modern modern love? love? What, what, it, it, was ex, a- it was like nine stories of how couples met or little instances. It was really good. It was oh. really well done. Oh, so really you would well like done. you would like a new season of that, in other words. Yeah, yes, 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 oh. yes. So oh. you did like like reboot like the Andy Griffith show, something like that. Yeah, yeah mine was well. mine was cheer, Shefty. Cheer, yeah, that, that that's good. Um as a kid I loved Happy Days back in the day. Phenomenal There program. you go. Phenomenal program. Absolutely. Yeah, that was that was that was really well done. Like I I, I think of the shows of, of my childhood, I would say uh uh, Happy Days definitely was something you know that that I always remember. Welcome Back, Cotter was something that I always loved. Oh, that's a good one. But, okay, they, yeah, it's, that's one I wouldn't mind seeing a uh, read because I missed I missed the boat on the first time around. I wouldn't mind a second. second there you go. Second and, and, I'll tell, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you another show I loved this as a kid. Probably very underrated TV show, The White Shadow. Oh, great show! Are you kidding me? The White yeah. Shadow. Oh, a basketball oh, show yeah. about a guy who co- coached in the ghetto of Los Angeles. Oh, it was a phenomenal show. Oh, yeah, that, that was out. really good, right? Yeah, uh, you, that was a great show, Shefty. Now you yeah. have my interest. Oh, it, interest. it was it was salami. Oh yeah, man, any, it was, any, it any, was anyone, phenomenal. Bob, how old are you? Uh, fifty-four. Yeah, and I'm fifty-three. So, yeah. so that so anyone in our age range. Uh, anyone, uh, there it is. Yeah. Anyone in our age range. <laughs> would, White would, Shadow would, was terrific. Oh, yeah. Anyone in our age range would have watched The White Shadow, would have, would know it, would love it. Wow. Um, yeah. I'll tell you right yeah. now, just by the theme music alone, I'm into it. And, and Mark, how old are you? I am 38. Just turned 38. Oh, my God. Yeah, baby. Well, happy belated birthday. <laughs> 38, you. yes. Yeah, Thank 15, you. 16 years behind Bob and I. So, <laughs> yeah, White Shadow was, was way past you, you know, way, way before you. Yeah. Was born a year after it went off the air, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, it, it was it was an outstanding show. Wait, it was. creator Bruce Paltrow is that like Gwyneth Paltrow's dad? I my, I, my don't I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But the guy who starred in it, Howard. Yeah, wait, he's pictured with. Uh, I'm looking at. IMDb yes, that right is now. Gwyneth's father. Wow, look at this. So the guy who coached in it. Do you have that up in front of you? Howard was uh, his last name, I believe. Uh, pulling it back up. I'm uh, sorry. That's no, all right. Uh, has become a a star in Hollywood as far as behind the scenes stuff. Really? really? Look at, look at yeah. Look at us learning he things. Was, I don't. Ken Howard, I think his name was. Ken Howard. Ken Howard, that's it. I believe yes. that's it. That's yeah, that's Ken that's Howard. Ken Howard. Uh, yeah, the premise of the show was great. He was an NBA player who tore a knee and had to cut his career short, and he went back it's and like coached Mr. these guys. Dude, it was a phenomenal <laughs> show. Yeah, yes. yeah. You guys got to go back and watch a couple and he episodes. Was, was Coolidge the guy? Coolidge, that team? yeah, yeah. He Coolidge was. was the big dude that he always yeah. had the trouble. They had salami. They had. They had. It was right. great characters in there. Wait, uh, he, he played Hank Hooper on Thirty Rock. He, I think there's the the boss of Cable Town. I believe. <laughs> Ken Finger. Howard did. I believe so. Okay, yeah, yeah. He he appeared in a lot of things. Yeah, this is the guy. This but is I Cable think Town. he became a real mogul behind the scenes of Hollywood. A, a very very well respected guy. At least I feel good about my picks of Happy Days and <laughs> and White Shadow. I'm like, with you, Shefty. You got me on board with they're, you, buddy. They're 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 rocking there, Shefty. Thanks so much, brother. Always appreciate talking to you, man. Guys, have a great week. Good luck Sunday night. Be well and stay. Safe. Mark Farzetta with Bob Cooney and Jamie Lynch. Mornings on 97.5 The Fanatic. Philadelphia.